Good evening, everyone, and thank you very much for the invitation to this wonderful event. Um, my name is Michal Ratsin, and currently I'm finishing my dissertation research at Columbia University. And I have to say straight away that the topic of my research is very, very specific. Uh, because I do an archival research related to the Russian intellectual thinking, and I do it here in New York. And believe me, uh, I know how weird and odd it all sounds, um, but I have almost six minutes to explain everything. So hopefully I will manage to do it in six minutes. Well, and I have to start at the beginning, and I won't start uh, in Russia, or not even the Czech Republic, um, but in Ukraine, because this is the place where I was born, and this is the place my parents come from. Um, but when I was about 10, we all moved to the Czech Republic, and Brno became our uh, new home. So this is the place where I moved. Yeah. Um, so this might be a first piece of a puzzle. I could say that I was interested in this immigration topic because of my, of my background and my childhood, and because I had my, um, let's say, on-hand experience of being an immigrant in a new country. But this is not the complete picture, of course, because uh, when I was finishing my high school, I didn't care about history or immigration. I was finishing my study uh, program in computer graphics and uh, engineering. And the next plan was to get to the faculty informatics. Um, but guess what happened? I didn't get to the faculty informatics. And instead of that, by many coincidences, um, I ended up at the faculty of arts and Slavic department studying Russian language. And I wasn't very happy about it. My parents very, weren't very happy about it. Um, but eventually, the more time I spent in the Faculty of Arts, um, the more I realized that my background actually gives me a unique perspective on many different things. And it actually helped me to develop uh, my current research project. So um, now you have a bit more about my background, but I guess you still have no idea what I actually do. So um, I, I would say that if I put it simply, I analyze and publish documents related to a fairly controversial um, political and ideological movement called Eurasianism. And the original Eurasianist movement was founded in 1920s by a group of Russian immigrants who left Russia after the Bolshevik Revolution um, and ended up in Europe. And some of them were based in Prague and some of them were based in Vienna in different, in different European cities. But some of them also left Europe and moved to the United States. Uh, so to give you a couple of names, one of the founders of the movement, Piotr Savitsky, uh, was based in Prague, and uh, his colleague, historian Georgi Vernadsky, stayed for some time in Europe and then moved to the uh, United States. But the thing is that even if they lived and moved to different places, they all stayed in contact with each other, and not just with each other, but also with their colleagues in Soviet Union. And one of those uh, scholars who was in touch with Vernadsky and Savitsky uh, was Lev Gumilev. It was a Russian historian and ethnologist uh, based in St. Petersburg. So following those, um, those intellectuals, I started my research in Prague at Slavonic Library. Um, then I spent some time in St. Petersburg. And now I'm finishing my research here in, uh, in New York. So basically, I connect those documents from a different archives and use them to follow the development and transformation of those Eurasianist concepts uh, in the second half of the 20th century during the Cold War. So now you have some basic idea of what I do and how I do it. But there is another question, and this is why. Why is it important? Why this research is useful? Well, the thing is that those Eurasianist ideas underwent a tremendous development in the past 100 years, and individual pieces of those ideas are now being used and misused by many Russian uh, politicians and ideologists in order to justify all the things which are happening now. Um, but since the beginning of my own research, I always argued that the analysis of the current situation is not enough, and in order to understand the current tension between Russia and Ukraine and United States, we have to go deeper into the history of Russian politics and, and philosophy. So this is what I do. And I wish I could do it 
in a different context, uh, but now it seems even more important. So to sum it up, I was born in Ukraine, then I moved to the Czech Republic, finished technical high school there, but eventually ended up at the Slavic department studying Russian language and history. Um, but I also work in IT, and I didn't mention it at the beginning because this is not the reason why I'm here in New York, but um, one part of my work looks like this, going through all the archival documents and so on, and the other part of my work looks like this. <laughs> and I would love to tell you more about it, um, but I guess I can save this topic for another six-minute challenge. Thank you. <laughs>